Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Looking at the Arabian Peninsula right now, we find that Alhamdulillah Al Madina Al Munawwara is the seat of Islam, the seat of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. Mecca Al Mukarrama now is a Muslim city. Again, it restored its worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the surrounding cities and the road between Mecca and Al Madina Al Munawwara is all filled with settlements of Muslims or tribes of Muslims. Again, Khuza'a, Aslam, Ashja, uh, Ghifar, Muzayna, Juhayna, all of these are tribes that have their loyalty with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. However, there are other kingdoms or other settlements away from that Hijaz part of the Arabian Peninsula. So now it's time for them to hear the message of Islam. These are areas that are relatively geographically remote and they would not invade Mecca or al Madina al Munawwara. And many of these settlements had already their own religions. They were not polytheists. So in Yemen, for example, we heard before about the, the Christian satellite state in Najran in al Yemen. And in going a little bit even uh, to the east, to what is now Oman, there was the kingdom of al Azdiyin or al Azd, and they were also Christians. Going a little bit no to the north, there's also another tiny Christian settlement uh, led by al Mundir ibn Sawa in the area that was called at that time al Bahrain. It is not the same as Bahrain as we know it today, the tiny uh, island in the uh, Gulf course or the uh, uh, Gulf. Uh, 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 in, in, the, in the Gulf area, uh, not Gulf course, the Gulf area, but it's, it used to be a, um, the, the eastern part of the Arabian Peninsula, probably what is now uh, Qatar and uh, al Dammam and al Dahran and all of this area. We have talked before about another settlement in the middle, which was al Yamama, and we talked about the leader of al Yamama, Thumama ibn Athal, who was also a Christian, and who was, he, he was trying to attack the uh, Al-Madina Munawwara and he was captured as a prisoner. We talked about him before and how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam set him free and how he embraced Islam and invited his people to Islam and they followed him to Islam. So that Bani Hanifa in al Yamama basically were another settlement of Muslims in the heart of the Arabian Peninsula. But now it's time for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to send messengers and ambassadors to these remote kingdoms. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked for qualified ambassadors with some specific qualities. So for Oman, for the Azdiyin, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chose Sayyidina Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu. Amr ibn al-As, he was a friend, a good friend of al-Najashi, as we have mentioned before, and he actually embraced Islam in Al-Habasha when he went to uh, Al-Najashi to try to claim the de delegation of the Muslims. And basically we mentioned before the details about how he embraced Islam in that foreign environment. So people knew that he had some connection with the different Christian satellite states, including their basic major settlement in Al-Habasha. So the Prophet wasallam sent him to that far kingdom in what is now Oman. And as you can imagine, traveling from uh, al Madina al-Munawwara to Oman, we're talking about one of the harshest terrains ever. It is, you have to cross an area of the, uh, the Arabian Peninsula that today is known as the Empty Quarter, Rub' al-Khali. Empty Quarter because it, this is an area that's a complete vast area of desert where there's no settlement, there's no life, there's no plantations, there's no water, there's nothing there. It's, a, it's an empty uh, expanse of desert. But the Prophet ﷺ delegated Sayyidina Amr ibn al-As for that mission because he knew how eloquent Sayyidina Amr ibn al-As might be, how smart he is, and he's going to find a way to convince the people of that remote land and bring them to Islam. 
Sayyidina Amr radiallahu anhu said, as soon as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam delegated me for this mission, I went diligently and I traveled the long distance on, until I reached uh, uh, Oman. Now, Sayyidina Amr, with his smart sense of responsibility and diplomacy, he started asking about who exactly are the rulers of this kingdom. And he learned that it was an elderly king or statesman, Al-Julanda, who had two sons, Abd and Jaifar. Jaifar was the de facto ruler, although the father still had the name, but the, the, the one who ran the state on a daily basis, sort of a crown prince, was Jaifar. And his younger brother, Abd, was kinder, who had a softer heart. So in order to approach this royal family, Sayyidina Amr radiallahu anhu started looking for the softest spot. And that softest spot was Abd ibn al-Julanda, the son of the younger son of the king. So he went with the message from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the sealed letter from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to show that this is an official correspondence. And he approached Abd first. And he started telling him about Islam. He told him, I came as a messenger of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's inviting you and your people to Islam. So Abd started inquiry, what, what exactly are you talking about? He said, well, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to us. Now Sayyidina Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu is replaying a tape that he had heard. He heard that presentation Islam 101, he heard that presentation be, being made to an Najashi in similar circumstances. An Najashi was a Christian, these are Christians. That presentation was made by one of the best spokesperson for Islam, Sayyidina Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. So Sayyidina Amr ibn al-As started playing that tape in his head and he started sort of using almost the same structure of that speech of Sayyidina Ja'far radiallahu anhu. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us the best of his creatures, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he invited us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and to abandon all the other false deities that we were worshiping apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people followed him, some people rejected him. They faced each other in different battles and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over the other tribes. And now he was sort of expecting what the next question would be because he had the, that was exactly what an Najashi asked Sayyidina, Amr, Sayyidina Ja'far radiallahu anhu, ila ma yad'u, what is he inviting to, to learn about this message, what is the core of this message. So Sayyidina Amr was ready with the answer. The man asked him, Abd asked him, and what does he invite to? And he said, ya'muruna bil'afaf wa sila wal amr bil ma'ruf wa nahi an munkar wa yanhana an ibadat al awthan he commands us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to do all the good things and to stay away from all the bad and evil things. And he orders us to be chaste, to be kind, to tie the ties of kinship and to, to, to have a strong family relationship. And he forbids us from doing all the evil and all the improper things. And... So the man kept listening to Sayyidina Amr radiallahu anhu and saying, well, so far so good, that sounds good. But the man had a new question for Sayyidina Amr because his father was known to be one of the leaders of uh, Mecca, Al-As ibn Wa'il al-Sahmi, one of the leaders of Quraysh who were opposing any other social movement and he was one of the op opponents of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi So he asked him, and what did your dad do about that? And Sayyidina Amr responded to him, well, my father fought the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he died as an unbeliever and I wish he had embraced Islam. Very interesting. So you are preferring your fellowship of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam than belonging to your own father. All right. Where did you embrace Islam? That was the next question. So Sayyidina Amr radiallahu anhu told him, I had embraced Islam actually in Al-Habasha in the palace of Al-Najashi. Of course, Abd knew about Al-Najashi, knew about that big, strong kingdom in Al-Habasha. 
And he, he asked him, and what did the Najashi do about that? He said, well, the Najashi followed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and declared his Islam. So Abd was surprised by that. He didn't get this piece of news. He said, watch what you're saying. I don't like liars. And Sayyidina Amr radiallahu anhu told him, and lying is forbidden in our faith. I'm telling you the truth. You can confirm that. And he said, and what did his priests and patriarchs do about that? He said, well, they initially they objected, but eventually they followed him when they saw his firmness in Islam. He said, this is really strange. And what did Qaisar do about that? Definitely Caesar of the Romans didn't hear about that because an Najashi reports to Caesar, the emperor of, uh, of the Romans. And Sayyidina Amr said, no, actually, Caesar knew about that and he didn't care much. He said, well, a man wants to follow a certain religion. Let him follow it. And he said, are you sure that he learned about it? How do, how do you know that he learned about that? He said, well, when an Najashi embraced Islam, he said, I used to send some money every year to Caesar as a protection ta tax. And now that I'm a Muslim, I'm not going to send it to him anymore. And Caesar learn, learned about that and he just accepted that. And he kept asking Sayyidina Amr radiallahu anhu all of these questions about what Islam is, how did he embrace Islam, how did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam treat his companions and so on and so forth. And the more he heard, the softer his heart became and the more he liked what he heard. So he told him, if what you told me is the truth, I like this. But let me try to talk to my older brother because he would never relinquish his kingdom for anyone. And Sayyidina Amr radiallahu anhu told him, he doesn't have to relinquish his kingdom. Actually, if he follows the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would approve him as the leader of his people. So he would not be denied that leadership and that kingdom. He said, that's even more interesting. Let me go and talk to him. So Abd went and talked to his brother, Jaifar, who initially didn't like the idea of basically reporting to someone. They are far remote in the desert. They do not even report to Caesar or they don't report to an Najashi. Why would I be a subordinate to anyone else? But his brother told him, you're not going to be subordinate to anyone except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is uh, just following his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who's going to approve you as the leader of your people. So anyway, the following day, Sayyidina Amr radiallahu anhu tried to talk to the older brother, Jaifar, and his people held him and he started speaking and started explaining what he said to the younger brother the day before. And Jaifar told him, read the message that was sent with you by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He read the message, which was basically the same content as was delivered to the younger brother. And he said, well, Come back tomorrow. Let me think about it. The following day he came and he was not allowed to meet with that viceroy or that crown prince. The following day he tried again and he was not allowed. So he went to the younger brother, told him, I was not allowed to meet with your older brother. Let's try to arrange for that meeting. So he arranged for that meeting and the man again tried to be stubborn. So he told Sayyidina Amr, uh, we need some more time to think about the contents of your letter. We cannot just accept it as such. Sayyidina Amr radiallahu anhu, feeling the reluctance, played his last card and he told him, listen, I am leaving tomorrow. Regardless of what your response might be, if you accept, alhamdulillah, if you reject, I'm going to go back to Medina and tell the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the situation, but you will have to pay the price. So the man thought about it quickly and he said, no, 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 stay with us. And then I want to follow your leader. I want to follow the Prophet Sallallahu And both he and his younger brother declared their Islam on the hands of Sayyidina Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu. Now there's still the king, the symbolic head of the state. Sayyidina Amr radiallahu anhu went and talked to him, that elderly statesman. And he basically convinced him about Islam. And the man told him, give my greetings to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and tell him that Oman is a kingdom that has abandoned the 
modified or disfigured Christianity that we had with the trilogy and all of that and the Trinity and we are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and we are going to do basically what we are required to do as Muslims. So Sayyidina Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu explained to him what you have to do is pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have to pay the zakah you have to fast in the month of Ramadan and then when it's time for Hajj you have to make Hajj once in a lifetime and the, the king told him but we have people who live in our land who are not even Christians they are uh, Majus the Zoroastrians and Sayyidina Amr radiallahu anhu told him well Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told me to give them the choice if they want to embrace Islam alhamdulillah if they don't want to embrace Islam they can still live in your land but they have to pay al jizya which is a protection tax because they're not going to be allowed to fight in the armies of the Muslims and the Muslims still are going to protect them and defend them so this is a tax that they're going to pay for their protection which is almost equivalent to the amount that a Muslim would pay in zakah so it's not an overburden over them to pay this zakah and all of them are skilled workers uh, to pay the jizya all of them are skilled workers if they can't they will be forgiven so this is great justice Al Julanda told Sayyidina Amr radiallahu anhu please give my greetings to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I wish I were strong enough to go and greet him personally but as you know I'm old and there's a very big uh, distance between here and, and Medina so please convey my greetings to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on my behalf Sayyidina Amr radiallahu anhu returned to Al Madina Al Munawwara and gave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the good news that this remote kingdom in Oman has become a Muslim state pledging their allegiance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their fellowship to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inshallah next time we're going to talk about another major settlement which is uh, not too far away from Oman and that is Al-Yemen who did the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam choose for that uh, responsibility for that ambassadorship what happened with that ambassadorship and then we're going to look even farther to the north so now we're talking about the south and the southeast which is al-bahrain oman and uh, al-yemen but later on we're going to talk about the north asham and we had already history with asham unfortunately it was not a very positive history when they attacked the army of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, three of the leaders of that army in the Battle of Mu'tah were martyred Sayyidina Zayd ibn Haritha, Sayyidina Ja'far ibn Abi Talib and Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Rawaha radiallahu anhum ajma'een so now we're going to see what is going to be the next step with this big regional force in Asham how would the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam treat them so until next time, insha'Allah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.